net. I want to show you how to use net with pools. So here's a simple network that I had before set up. In the previous video we did um, PAT, port address translation. So basically we, we bound the access list to the um, inside global address here and use the command overload which effectively made it PAT. So instead of binding that one IP address to only one PC inside a mapping it I guess you could say inside the network only one could communicate you could identify them with ports so you could have like thousands of PCs sharing one um, port and you can do the same one IP address but you could do the same with pools but uh, you can share that among multiple IP addresses right pools a group of IP addresses so this was confusing to me at first, and I'm going to do a weird setup here just to show you the better explain how this kind of works, these pools, because I just couldn't get the, the concept because I always thought, well, how does it get to the interface and why is it not the same IP address? I was just really confused. So here's the public network right here, the Luna Cloud. So Luna is the ISP manager. And she's having a lot of fun, as you can see, she's spewing rainbows everywhere. And she was gracious enough to give us a block of addresses. So she gave us 100.50.0.0 slash 30. So that effectively gives us a range from 0 to 3. And here in the last octet, it starts with 0. So as you probably know with subnetting, if you've ever done it, um, you've only you have to subtract the total IP addresses minus two, right? Because there's the subnet ID right here, which is zero, and the broadcast, which is three, and the next subnet would be four. So effectively, we only have two IP addresses that we can use. I know, I know, right? Wasted two addresses, but that's what happens when you subnet. Um, so all Luna did here in the cloud is she just had on her router right here, wherever that may be because this is the other end that connects to our butter router. She just says, hey, this network, go out this interface. Just a static default route going out this line here. That's basically all it is. So she just points to our router for these block of addresses. So how do we use that with our router now? So we look at the commands, it's pretty easy. Just like before with um, the basic net, there are four commands. We made an access list. Um, we bound the pool, uh, bound the access list to the interface, and we used overload av in brackets because that's optional. I highly recommend it. I mean, it'd be kind of dumb not to use it. And define the inside and outside interfaces. So any networks that you're translating, like the private addresses, you say that interface is the inside, and what it's going to be translated into, right, the public network usually, um, you say that's the outside. But in this example, we have, um, let's start from the beginning, with pools, it's a little different. We have one extra command here. So we define an access list and say the IP address range that, um, that we want to translate, right? This is the interesting traffic. So if the router sees this, it says, hey, this needs to be translated. And the next step is to make a pool, right? So all you have to do is IP nap pool and give it a name. I just put in cap locks, I don't know pool name and then I defined the range of IP addresses so I started with 150.00 and ended with 150.03 that's the whole range and then net mass so I put a subnet mass that fits into and that's a slash 30 255, 255, 255, 252 so effectively what this does I mean that will only use two IP addresses right because zero is the subnet ID and three is the broadcast so you really can only use one and two and we only got two PCs here so that'll work out just fine and then the last um, the next the next step is to do IP net inside so translate the inside addresses with um, with the access list that we defined right the interesting traffic and then we bind that to the pool so what are we going to translate these private addresses into and we def uh, you just say the pool name, which is right here. We just define those addresses that it translates it into. And it's just common sense. I would do overload. You don't have to if you don't want to. If you just want one IP address, one computer to grab an IP address, and that IP address um, 
will be um, defined. So I'll talk about that a little bit later on, how that works. But for now, um, overload just means that you can uniquely identify um, inside hosts with port numbers instead of just an IP address. Because, again, we have a limited number of IP addresses and we have to share them. So that effectively makes the pool um, each IP address port address translation pad. You can mix and match different types of NATs. It's pretty cool. And then you define the inside and outside interfaces. So outside, um, just saying what interface are going out on, what this is going to be translated into, what interface, um, I guess the private addresses are, the inside network, right? Inside, outside. Pretty simple. So let's go ahead and do that on the butter router. So access list one permit 10 as there. I don't know why they use a wildcard mask. I think it's dumb, but whatever. That pool. Just give it a name and then the range of addresses. that you want in the subnet mask for that. Um, IP net inside source list one. Um, it doesn't have to be one. I just named the access list one in the first step. Um, and then we bind that to the pool and then the name of the pool, what they're going to be translated into. You could do overload if you want. I would recommend it, but for now we're just going to leave that about it. Um, and then we're going to go to the serial interface, say this is the outside network and the gigabit interface where local LAN is. And we're going to say this is the inside, inside network. So hopefully that should be it. And again, Luna Cloud says um, right here that for any of the this block of addresses, go out this interface. So the inner ISP knows that it goes out this interface here that goes to our router. So it does not matter what we're connected to, right? Our connection to the cloud is 200.99.4.8 slash 30. But she was kind enough to give us another block right here to point to us. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and go to Pinkie Pie. So I'll cross our fingers and let's ping cake. So we're going to go ahead and ping 208.56.2.6. So sweet, we can ping um, that cake router here out on the internet. So a little uh, summary of what's going on. Pinkie Pie wants to ping cake. So this PC sends it to the router and the router sees, hey, it's coming from the inside network here with this IP address range. That's our access list. And it's going out this interface here to the internet. So what the router does is translates the source address. So it's no longer 10, 000 slash 24. It is now 100.50 dot zero dot z um, zero slash 30. That's the network it gets translated into when the packet gets in the outside network right here. So the source address becomes this IP address. And uh, the destination is still the same. So it goes out to cake. And when it gets to cake, it notices the source IP address is 100.50.0.0. Um, the ISP knows where it, it goes, so it goes back to uh, the ISP or whatever. This just has a default route out to the internet, right? This is just another PC or something out on the internet. And the cloud, the ISP, Luna Cloud, knows that, hey, I gave this um, person over here these block of addresses, so it sends it out this interface out here. And the butter router says, hey, I got uh, NAT running, and I, I have a little table, and I see that these addresses, 100.50.0.1, let's just say, 
goes to this inside PC over here, Pinkie Pie, because she initiated the connection. It makes a little table, a NAT table. And we can see that on the butter router if we want to. So let's go ahead and see, do show IP NAT translations. Actually, let's uh, do another ping because it, pro it times out. So let's go back to Pinkie Pie and do another ping and let's show the IPNet translations there you go so you can see that the inside global address so inside local so this is the PC.5 so pinkies.5 and the inside global is what it gets translated into so you can see it gets translated into 150.0.1 which is in our pool and outside local and global is just the destination address, so that never changes. So this is a little table that I was talking about. So when it comes back on, let's say, 150.0.1, port 19, it says, hey, that goes to the inside PC here on this. So repackages it and sends it out to the correct PC. So let's do the same on Fluttershy. So let's go to and let's ping that destination again. Ping 208.56.2.6. And do -do -do. let's do show IP NAT translations. And you can see here is dot four. Now these, you don't see these anymore because it timed out. I waited too long. I'm just talking through too long. So you can see here's dot four. So let's see both of them. Let's just go ahead and do another ping because they time out after a while. So let's go ahead and there we go. So you can see that we're currently using the IP addresses one and two in that pool, the inside global or public addresses. You can see here the PCs dot four and dot five on the inside. So that's basically it. Um, it grabs one IP address per one inside global IP address per inside host. And if you use the overload command, then a bunch of inside PCs can will use the first IP address in that pool. And when that runs out of ports to use to uniquely identify inside hosts, it'll use the next IP address. So overload is really, really cool and allows you to have like thousands of inside PCs to share uh, that share one public IP address. So thank you for watching and I hope this was helpful.